So this video lesson is all about the idea of converting customary units. And in order to convert customary units, we first have to talk about um, what customary units are, remember the things that customary units are, and then go back and look at the way that we convert metric units to see if we can draw any um, parallels between the metric unit conversions and the customary unit conversions. So first, let's take a look back at the metric system and the way that we convert units in the metric system. Now for the metric system, we have this handy way of describing the number of units that we have. Uh, they have one unit, of course, um, as you'll remember back from the metric system videos, for length, the meter, one unit for capacity, the liter, and one unit for mass being the gram. And in order to change the number of each of those that we have, we just add a prefix. So that if we add hecto to the beginning of gram and make hectogram, that means we have 100 grams. If we add centa to the beginning of liter and get centiliters, that means we have a small unit of capacity so that 100 centiliters make a liter or a centa is one one hundredth of a liter. And so pause the video for a second and write down your thoughts on whether or not the customary system has anything quite like this, where it's easy to use things in, set in uh, multiples of 10 um, like we have here to convert, um, and if not, why you feel like that's not the case. So the answer is the customary system really doesn't have anything like that. And the reason we can see that it doesn't have anything like that, not the reason why it is the way it is, but the reason why we can see that is even if we just look at units of length, we have 12 inches in a foot, which is also not 10. Um, we have 3 feet in a yard. We have 5,280 feet in a mile. And things like that. That is just in our units of length. And so each different type of unit, length, capacity, and weight in the customary system has different rules in terms of converting it. So we really don't have a system quite like this. So we have to come up with a different way of converting between units in the customary system where we can be sure that the conversion that we're actually doing is going to be correct and give us the answer that we're looking for. So um, the first thing I want to think about in talking about that is what about fractions that equal 1? Think back to fractions that equal 1, and most fractions that equal 1 are things like 7 sevenths, 5 fifths, 3 thirds, we could go on forever. But the key part of a fraction that is equal to 1 is that the numerator and the denominator have to represent the exact same value. So 3 and 3, obviously, because they're the same thing, represent the same value, so 3 over 3 is the same as 1. 7 and 7 both obviously represent the same value, so 7 and 7 are equal to 1. Now I want you to pause the video and see if you can come up with some more ideas, not quite like this where we have one number in the numerator and one number in the denominator, but come up with other ways of creating fractions where the numerator and denominator represent the exact same value. Pause the video for a minute or so, come up with as many um, examples as you can, um, and then unpause the video and keep going. So the first way that we can come up with fractions where, um, that are equal to 1 or that represent 1 is just by making sure that our numerator and denominator, and it's the way that we come up with fractions like that, represent the same value. So if we want to have more than one number, then let's say we have 2 times 6 in the numerator. That's 12. Well, 12 can also be represented as 3 times 4. So even though this fraction doesn't look like 1, 2 times 6 and 3 times 4 are both equal to 12. So this really does represent the same as 12 over 12. Um, or we have something like uh, 6 times 4 and 8 times 3. 6 times 4 is 24, 8 times 3 is 24. They both represent the exact same value. So those fractions actually do equal 1. Well, what about these fractions? Remember that the fraction, in order to really represent the same as 1, or 1 whole, or something that we can multiply or divide another fraction to to create an equivalent fraction, just has to equal 1. So what if we extended that concept and created a fraction where the top was 1 foot And the denominator was 12 inches. Now the units, the num or the numbers rather, 
the integers in this case, in this fraction, are 1 and 12. And if we took the units away, this fraction would be 1 12. But in some way, this sort of does equal 1. Because when we look at what the numerator and denominator actually represent, a foot is the same as 12 inches. 2,000 pounds, LBS for pounds, is the same as one ton in the customary system. So even though 2,000 and one are different numbers, so if we take away the units, this is just 2,000, but the fraction itself has a numerator and a denominator that represent the exact same value. 2,000 pounds is the same as one ton. So the numbers don't equal one, but the ideas behind them equal one. These measurements are exactly the same. And so these are what we're going to call conversion fractions. And we can use these fractions to convert between units of the customary system. So go ahead and pause the video, and you're going to write down two things. First, you're going to write down the definition of a conversion fraction, a fraction where the numerator and denominator contain different units but represent the same amount. So in a way, these fractions mean the same as 1 when we're converting. And to convert between units of the customary system, we're going to have this process. We start with the measurement we know, we multiply by a conversion fraction that has that unit, and then we repeat step two if necessary until we reach the one we need. We don't have to understand exactly what the conversion idea means right now. We will in just a second when we go through an example. Um, go ahead, pause the video, write these down, and come back. So I want to take a, back, take a look for a second back at the idea of a conversion fraction one more time. Um, we said that these two fractions here, 1 foot over 12 inches, um, is the same as 1. This is a conversion fraction. 2,000 pounds per ton, 2,000 pounds over 1 ton, 2,000 pounds over 1 ton represent the same thing. So this is a conversion fraction. In terms of converting, this is the same as, same as 1, or they represent the same thing. And I want you to go ahead and pause the video again and see if you can come up with six more examples of conversion fractions, fractions where the numerator and denominator represent the same value, different units, but the same value of measurement. Um, don't use the two that we had done before, and uh, pause the video, come back when you're ready to move on. So there are a lot of different conversion fractions that you could come up with. Um, these are five examples um, that you could have. First, the two examples that we had before that you shouldn't have used. Uh, but also things like one yard over three feet, or three feet over one yard. We can have it either way, because they represent the exact same fraction. One gallon is the same as four quarts. Eight fluid ounces is the same as one cup. Now we have to make a distinction between fluid ounces and regular ounces, um, because they are different measurements. Ounces, as they are, without the fluid in front of it, are measurements of weight in the customary system. Fluid ounces, as we have here, is a measurement of capacity. So now let's take a look at how these conversion fractions can actually help us to convert between units of the customary system. So if we wanted to know how many inches were in 12 feet, if we think this through, if we think this through just um, sort of naturally, knowing that there are 12 inches in one foot, if we have 12 feet and every one of those feet contains 12 inches, well then 12 inches per foot times 12 feet should give us something around 144 inches. So knowing this, this isn't just in its form right now, this is not a precise conversion, because all we have is 12 times 12. We're not guaranteed that this is actually going to give us the number of inches. It makes sense, it is the number of inches, but there's nothing in this setup here that tells us that that's the case. So we use what we call a conversion fraction. We have 12 feet over 1. We want to start with that 12 feet. This is step 1. Start with the unit you know. Then, step 2 is we're going to find a conversion fraction that contains the unit we want and the unit we have. 12 inches per 1 foot. Now the key part about this idea here is that our units need to be in opposite halves of the fraction. We have 12 feet in the numerator, and we have feet in the denominator. And it turns out that units can cancel exactly like numbers can 
when you're multiplying through in a conversion. So if we're starting with feet, we can't we don't want to multiply by one foot over twelve inches because twelve divided by twelve is one, and twelve feet contain far more than one inch. One inch is smaller than a foot, so it makes sense that we're multiplying by this number. But because we have the feet in the numerator and the feet in the denominator, they cancel in a conversion just like a number. And now the only units that we have left are inches. 12 times 12 is 144 inches. Let's take a look at that in one more example. Um, so when practicing, we want to use this fraction notation rather than just the multiplication or the division um, that we said before. We want to use this fraction notation. So five yards is the same as how many feet? Well, we start with what we know, which is five yards. It's not one-fifth of a yard or anything like that. So five yards over one. Um, because when we're multiplying through with fractions, we always start with something over one. So we know five yards. Now we need to find a way to compare yards to feet. And we want our yards to be in the bottom. Because we want to be able to look at our yards in the numerator and our yards in the denominator and cancel them out. So how can we compare yards to feet? Well, one yard is the same as three feet. And so since we can look at this, we can cancel the yards in the numerator. We can cancel the yards in the denominator. The only unit we have left is feet. 5 times 3 is 15. 1 times 1 is 1. That is 15 feet. Now be careful, because if you have a unit in the denominator, you have to carry it through just like we do in any kind of fraction multiplication. 3 times 5 ends up in the numerator, and 1 times 1 or 3 times 7 ends up in the numerator, 1 times 1 ends up in the denominator. So we multiply through exactly like we do in other fractions. So see what you can do with this idea. There are two slides here of practice problems for you to do. There are four total problems. Don't stop the video after this first set of problems is done because there's another one there. So here are the first two problems. Three tons is the same as how many pounds, and two gallons is the same as how many pints. Uh, go ahead, pause the video here, work through both of these, see what you can do. Use the fraction notation. Um, you can use just your own instinct to double check that your answer makes sense. Think about which one is bigger. If pounds is bigger than tons, or if tons is bigger than pounds, that will change how we think about it. Um, but go ahead, pause the video, see what you can do, come back, we'll look at the answers to these two, and then go on to the final two problems. So first, we start with what we know, three tons. That's the only thing we can start with, because that's what we have. Now, if we have three tons, we want pounds. And we know that we can compare tons to pounds in a conversion fraction, where the numerator and the denominator represent the exact same value. And that's because one ton, which is going to go in the denominator, so that this ton and this ton can cancel out, is the same as 2,000 pounds. So the tons are gone, a ton in the numerator divided by a ton in the denominator, and the units are canceled just like their common factors. And so now all we have to do is multiply across the numerators and denominators. 3 times 2,000 is 6,000 pounds. 1 times 1 is 1, so 3 tons is the same as 6,000 pounds. Now let's take a look at 2 gallons and pints. We're starting with 2 gallons. There's not a good way of converting gallons to pints unless we know that there are 8 pints in a gallon, which there are. But if we didn't know that, we would know that 1 gallon is the same as 4 quarts. Our gallons can cancel out. That gives us 8 quarts over 1. And now we can use a second conversion fraction. The fact that a quart is the same as 2 pints. And end up with the idea that there are 16 pints 
into gallons. So last two problems, go ahead and pause the video here, see what you can do about converting 42 ounces to pounds, one mile to yards. Keep in mind which one is bigger. Are we converting to or from a bigger unit? And remember that our conversion fraction must be in the orientation so that we can cancel the units. Otherwise, we won't end up with the same unit, uh, with the correct units or the correct numbers. So go ahead, pause the video, and come back when you're ready. So 42 ounces to pounds. Now this is the first time in our set of things here, um, in our set of problems, where we've changed from a smaller unit to a larger unit. So 42 ounces is what we're going to start with. And we're going to start with it again in the numerator because we have 42 ounces. We don't have 1 divided by 42 ounces. We have 42 ounces. And now we want to find a conversion fraction that relates ounces to pounds, where ounces and pounds represent the exact same thing. So, we know we have ounces in the denominator because we have to cancel out the ounces, and we can um, compare ounces to pounds because it takes 16 ounces in weight to make one pound. Now notice, the 16 is in the denominator because the 16 belongs with the ounces. It takes 16 ounces to make a pound, not 16 pounds to make an ounce. So, the ounces cancel, and now we are left with 42 over 16 pounds because 42 times 1 and 1 times 16. Now obviously this is not in simplest form. We can put it in simplest form by dividing it by 2, uh, numerator and denominator both by 2, rather not the entire thing by 2, to get 21 eighths pounds. Or if we wanted to convert that to a mixed number, that would be the same as 2 and 5 eighths pounds. Finally, one mile to yards. Well, we can't convert, well we can if we know we did a conversion, but we don't immediately have the conversion from the measuring customary units lesson that converts the mile directly into yards. But we know from the last set of problems that one mile is the same as 5,000 280 feet. And that 5,280 feet and one mile represent the exact same distance. So therefore, if they represent the exact same distance, we can use them in a conversion fraction and cancel the miles. This leaves us with 5,280 feet. Now we're almost there. We're not quite there because we don't have yards yet. But we know that there are three feet in a yard. So now feet go in the denominator so that they can cancel with the feet up here. And there are three feet for one yard. Notice our three, once again, is in the denominator rather than in the numerator like we had for the first few because there are three feet in every yard. Yard is a larger unit than feet. So if we have 5,280 feet, we better have less yards than that because yards are bigger. 5,280 then divided by 3, if we wanted to cancel like we could in multiplication, is 1,760 over 1. And so there are 1,760 yards in 1 mile. Quickly to review, um, we have these fractions that we call conversion fractions. Conversion fractions are fractions where the numbers don't seem to indicate one, but the units that are added to them mean that the numerator and denominator of the fractions represent the same weight, they represent the same distance, they represent the same um, capacity, and in order to convert between units of the customary system, we use these conversion fractions so that when we multiply our conversion fraction by the unit that we have, we can cancel the units just like we can common factors. 12 feet times 12 inches per 1 foot is the same as 12 times 12, or 144 inches.